team asked me to research VMs and see how they compare to other cloud native approaches like, you know, uh, microservices, containers, serverless. And uh, to be honest with you, I am not excited about it at all. So I've brought in someone who is. Uh, Brian, resident VM expert. Hello, Welcome. hello. <laughs> um, I'm super happy to be here because I am really excited about VMs. How? See, this is why I wanted <laughs> to bring you here. Uh, I don't understand. How can you be so excited about VMs already? How can you not? It is like the best of both worlds. You know, you've got a stable, reliable system you can run anything on, and you're in the cloud, you know, close to all of the, the new features, and you get new automation tooling. So, see, that's what I'm kind of skeptical about. Uh, when I think about modern systems or anything like that, I'm not sure that a VM can provide me with those. Okay. Well, let, let's be kind of specific there. What do you mean by a modern system? Uh, when I think about a modern system, uh, I think about things like mod modularity. I think about scalability and reliability. I want automation. I don't want to have to do everything manually. I even think about portability and being able to move my workflows wherever they need to go. I, so I want things to just kind of work too. I don't want to have to do everything myself. Got Is that it. something I can get with a, a VM? Yeah, great. Because I actually think we can get most of that. And I, I kind of wonder, you know, why not? So let's let's go one level deeper and then we'll come back out. So w in your mind, what is a VM? Oh, <laughs> you're putting me on the spot, Brian. Yep. Okay. Uh, a VM is it's it's a, a computer, but it's it's a virtualization. It's a slice of a computer. Uh, and so what it lets you do is it lets you run multiple operating systems on one machine. So it looks like you have multiple machines running on one physical machine. Yep, absolutely. And in the cloud, kind of not. Oh, what? Yeah, so here's, here's, here's why I say not. So the abstractions are all there, right? So you've got memory, CPU, disk, networking. And instead of from one computer, in the cloud, that's coming from all of the computers in a data center. So, you know, the CPU is coming from a lot of machines, the networking is from the whole data center. And so I like to think about it as instead of a slice of a computer, it's a slice of the data center. Instead of a slice of a computer, it's a slice of a data center. That, I, that sounds interesting, impressive even, uh, but also abstract. So do you have oh. some examples of things that you can get from a cloud VM? that you can't get from a VM on one machine. So my yeah. turn to be specific. Um, yeah, so I think one example is like uh, bin packing. So you talk about uh, these VMs and they're different shapes. So you have you know one that needs a lot of CPU, another that needs a lot of memory. Maybe you've got a bunch of them that need a lot of CPU and they don't fit so well in the same box without kind of orphaning some of the, the memory or CPU. Um, and if you're running those in a whole data center, you know, or you can basically just leave it to Google to solve that problem, you can just have whatever shape machine you want and we'll figure out where to put it. And basically that lets you customize your machines to exactly what you need. Okay, that's very interesting because that's a hard problem. And, and so if you can just let Google handle uh, where your workloads are gonna go, that, that's, that's a good benefit. If that's the only benefit of cloud <laughs> VMs, though, I'm not sure I'm sold on them over other approaches. Okay. And is there anything else we got? Absolutely. There's, <laughs> there's a ton of stuff we could talk about um, you know, in terms of automation and other things. But I think another really concrete kind of specific example is disks. And it's kind of my, my favorite there because you think about physical disk and you read and write blocks from it, right? It's a block device. Um, in the data center level, those blocks could be on hundreds or thousands of different machines. And so all of them are working together to give you more reliability and you know, make things smoother, more predictable in terms of performance. So what you get out of it is something that looks a lot like a SAN. You can take backups of disks that are running even, or you can, you know, if you run out of space, like I think almost all of us have, you can just make the disk bigger. Uh, so things like that. That's impressive, uh, especially like you're saying, being able to run and just scale up, scale down, or resize. Um, okay, then another very targeted question. It's going to sound like a dig. I don't mean it to. <laughs> uh, Google's putting a lot of effort and resources in the Google Containers engine. And so is Google even still investing in VMs? I mean, absolutely. Uh, where do you think these containers run? Like, So every Kubernetes cluster is running on top of a whole bunch of VMs, right? Um, and so every, everything you learn about VMs, you know, applies to those clusters uh, that you're running. And 
Also, another example is, you know, our managed databases, so Cloud SQL. So if you're running, you know, Postgres or MySQL on Cloud SQL, that's running on VMs. And there's a bunch of other examples, too. I can't get away from VMs even if I tried, it sounds like. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, the way you're saying that is making me think that maybe, maybe I need to rethink my idea that VMs are just old, dusty pieces of technology. Uh, so I want to be clear, definitively, are you saying that VMs have a place in a cloud-native future? Absolutely. Um, so I want to, I want to kind of like take old and dusty and and turn that into mature and reliable, right? <laughs> and then the future part, you know, so all these things are built on top of it, and we're building new things uh, over time. So we've got tools for scaling clusters of machines up and down. Um, that's using Kubernetes, but you can use it directly. And you know, we keep you know investing and doing more and more things there. So absolutely, part of the future as well. So. Okay. Is and then what about if I wanted to switch to them? It, like, you know, I'm pretty familiar with Kubernetes. It's it's fairly easy to get started. Uh, what about with a VM? Is it going to take me years to get started on these? No, I mean it's it's just a computer. So you know, basically anything that's already running on a computer somewhere, even if you don't have like the team who built it nearby, you can you can run that on a VM, and in turn you can run it on a cloud VM and and get a bunch of the cloud benefits as well. All right, I I must admit that you've swayed me a little bit. I'm still skeptical, but what you said made a lot of sense. I, I still have a lot of questions. You know, I want to know about keeping costs down. I want to know about uh, how do I update VMs? I, I have this idea in my head that they're really slow to start and stop. Uh, stateful data, I'm curious about that, you know? Uh, awesome. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? Uh, let's have this combo another day, and maybe just maybe we can agree uh, that VMs do matter in a cloud-native future.